Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tone Talk with Mark Uzanski and Dave Friedman. Tonight, we are showing off the new IRX, the uh, new pre preamp pedal from Friedman Amplification. Dave, are you excited? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. So here we go. I'm tired, man. <laughs> it's been a you've been doing a lot of interviews were those all done before or oh they were all done at different times for sure you know um i mean some of them go back i don't even know i don't you know, here's the thing after this morning i have i've been busy at the factory all day so i have no idea what videos have gone up or not gone up i didn't see michael's go up but i know it's up and i think uh, everything went up I don't By know. Mirror guitar went up. I know they have one coming. If not, hmm. uh, that was actually you know recorded like in March or something. And Jordan Ziff's video that sounded great. Yeah, that was the official Friedman one. Yeah, there will be there will be a playthrough video that is just the song with him playing in the room with none of the bullshit on top. None of me. None of me sitting there talking to you. Uh, so, you know, look for that. I think that's going to, uh, I think I'm going to make that live on the 30th. Um, I hadn't finished my song yet. And then Dave goes, Hey, check this out. You know, Jordan, right? And he sends me what Jordan did. I was like, Oh no, that's so good. <laughs> oh crud. I got to really step up my game here. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, and, 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 and Jordan was like, ah, man, you know, when I did the song, cause he wrote and composed the song, you know? And when I, he goes, when I did the song, I did a lot of improvising on it. And, uh, so, uh, he goes, fuck, I gotta, I gotta learn it again. <laughs> Kids, <laughs> You know, I yeah. had to learn it again. Moved on uh, to the next thing. Um, yeah. Hey, Dave K says everybody is echoing, but I don't hear any echo. So I don't hear any echo either. Yeah. Is everybody good? Uh, yeah guys in the chat let us know if you hear any echo because dave says he hears it no echo here they say okay perfect that's weird yeah so dave check your uh check your stuff not you dave we'll and you're you're at first mark your mic sounded a little weird i think you were eating it a little bit and it was maybe it's too hot or something you're, i don't know you're, you're, at first mark your mic sounded a little sorry this weird. I think that's me if there, you hear an echo maybe trying to turn that down there we go okay <laughs> all right it's cause problems that's so you can read the chat huh yes i forgot about that but you can read the chat in Streamyard. really see where it yeah. says comments over on the right hand call side oh look at that i can just turn there you go phone. you can turn that other thing off i've learned so much today well it changed they added that feature oh, yeah that's new great. and you can and you can uh, you can post and talk shit back to our viewers, if you'd like. Oh, I could join the chat. Well, I'm gonna... <laughs> once we know there's a guitar tone, I'll, I'll maybe venture into more software. <laughs> Scary. No, the IRX is not an echo pedal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and then at the beginning at the beginning of this chat, uh, what did I just do to my screen? Okay, at the beginning of this uh, chat here, I noticed that someone said. Is the IRX an upgrade to the current small box and BE pedal? No, it's not a pedal. So those are overdrive or distortion pedals. That's a whole different thing. This is an all-tube preamp with uh, built-in IRs to go direct with, or you can use it as a preamp to you know, go into the effects loop return of your amp. Or you can do it. The hookups are like immensely crazy. So if anyone's emailed me about that, I know one guy has, um, and I'm going to email you back, but I just haven't had time today yet. So bear with me. Been a busy day. There's a million. There's a million ways you can hook this up. There's a million ways you can dream up new configurations for it. So uh, you know. if I may, I'll just uh, I'm going to give the uh, the ten cent tour here. Um, can you see it? Well, yes, you can. Yes, see you it. can. Okay, yep. great. So, like Dave said, it is a preamp in a floor i'm even scared to say pedal now but it's in a floor format um but it is a full dave would say high voltage is legit preamp so anyone who is asking dave to make a preamp um that's the preamp right there mm -hmm. um 
channel one and channel two. Channel one is uh, most similar to like a Dave Friedman Plexi. Uh, channel two is most similar to a Dave Friedman traditional sort of BE voicing. Uh, if you look here, you've got your three treble mid bass. Oh, there's my knuckles. How do you like that? Uh, if you look there, you've got treble mid bass, independent gain. This little section here is super cool. So you've got the channel volume independent for either one, but then you have your boost foot switch, which again is independent per channel. You have a separate volume as well as on the side, there's a very easily trimmable clean boost going on. So uh, right now I'm in channel two, as you can see. Oh, Les Paul. We're not responsible for the tuning. <laughs> <laughs> Am I uh, clipping at all? No. Maybe a, just a Smith scotch. Okay, so, I mean, that's it's just so easy to get good sounds out of this thing. It's ridiculous. So easy. It is ridiculous. It's so easy. Um, there's a tight switch here. I'm on the most open of the bottom end right now. Oh, the fattest. The fattest, thanks. Words. And then that tightens it up. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the delay so you can hear Yep. Uh, so if you're like a tight person, you, you may be in the tighter mode. Over here, you get your three positions of uh, front panel, cabinet IRs, and that's independent per channel. So you could have six completely different IRs going on, three that are your favorite sort of clean all the way to like ACDC plexi kind of stuff. And then you could have three for your higher gain side, which is like plexi all the way to like full-blown um, metal sort of tones there. Um, but, you know, going back to this boost section, which is really great, uh, I really like the sound of the boost overall. It's just a, a clean boost, but it drives so nicely into the, the uh, gain circuit. If I go to the boost, it switches to the boost volume. So if you are someone that has to control your own solo levels, you could do that, or you just set them to unity. Um, and then you have your control over the boost on the side, how much you want. Sounds awesome. Uh, we have a question here. Is the boost based on a TS style or just natural? It's like the HB, right? Well, it's sort of it's sort of like simulates it's 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 kind of a clean boost, but it's slightly voiced like the HBE circuit. So in in like one of our uh, you know B one hundred amp, for instance, the 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 HBE is just a gain stage boosting the BE. So in in essence, it's the same thing. We're boosting into the BE channel with more gain and a slight, I mean, slight EQ voice to it. It does feel like a four channel. It, you can set it up, I should say, to feel like a four channel preamp uh, very easily. Um, or you could set it up to feel like really like a three channel with a lead volume boost or, or just a two channel with a volume boost. I mean, it's really flexible in that regard. Now, even more so, um, you, I don't know if everyone has seen the editor, the software editor, uh, which Mark, maybe you could switch over to that. Sure. Um, what is super cool about this, um, especially if you're going direct. It's a little cloudy looking on the screen, so sorry about that, but it's. It is I'm really not, crisp in person. It, it, it's it, in person. It's very crisp. <laughs> Just somehow the way we're sharing here. screens, it's doing something weird. They're a little dark. Um, so let's say you've got um, 
Well, I'll show you right here. We're, we're still in channel two. I'm gonna undo the boost. Um, on the editor, you have more controls. It, if you're someone who wants to have like the equivalent of six channels, 10 channels, if you have a separate MIDI controller, you really have that here. Because uh, one of the things that's big on the tone shaping is the presence and the thump. Uh, we all know that, you know, sort of is like the sort of top end and then the bottom end wump. So, oh, that was a good one. That's the most, and then this would be the least of the thumb. That's a prominent difference between the two. Yeah. So you got three positions there. And then you couple that with the tight switch. You have a lot of tone shaping. Uh, the tight switch is not MIDI controllable, but the thump is, as is the presence. I'm going to go to the lowest presence. So if I go like full presence, full thump, I'm going to switch over to the tighter mode. I'm going to switch over and switch the boost on. And then I could go to I could go to one of the other IRs that's more maybe feels heavier. So like that IR has a more of a scooped sort of heavy feel than this is Dave's main cab, which has more of a woody feel. And then the V30 down at the bottom there has more of a brighter, you know. Yeah. But it does all that chimey, you know, like cutting. If you, did, you tune down guitar, you might want the V30, you know. It, it, you might dial it in a little different, but, you know. Or you add your own, you know, you go in there. Uh, or you go, click on this plus sign, and there is an entire selection of EV, uh, Dave's other cabs, uh, speakers, mixes of greenbacks and V30s. There's Is that black? Is that black back? Is that a black back? Yes. 30 watt? Uh, it says 57, 160. Black. I think that is a 30 watt, uh, 30 watt black back. And the, the 57, 160 is the microphone's uh, like a microphone designation. So it was a hmm. Bayer Dynamic 160 with a SM57. And these are 57s uh, with a Royer 121. Uh, if it says, here's two SM57s with a Royer uh, 121. So, because it's a greenback and V30 mix. So it was 57 on each of those with a, the 121. Mm -hmm. so, Here, so here's a question. Uh, if this is a preamp and an IR is a sim of a speaker, where does the power amp tone come from? Scott, Scott Rand, thanks for your question. Well, there, there is uh, in uh, the digital back end, meaning after the return of the amplifier, there is a uh, power amp simulation. Essentially, it's the power amp of B100 Deluxe. And that's when you're coming out of the... Uh, the balanced out. The balanced out, right. Mm -hmm. And even if you turn the IR off, say you're going into something else where you want the IR off, you still get the power amp sim. If you're yeah. going out the balanced out. Yeah. Um, like I was talking to a friend today and he was super excited because he's like, I could run this live. I could run the IRX to whatever backline amp they have and you'd run into the effects return. That you'd send out of the IRX's effects loop send. The effects loop send has no IR on it. Mm -hmm. So that will go straight to this live amp and then the balanced output will go to the front of house, mm -hmm. and you're you, rocking. You can even go crazier than that. So you could go, say, through an effect pedal chain or a delay pedal or something. So you take the send into a delay pedal, come out of the delay pedal, and split it two ways. One to the, um, the return of an amp and the other back into the return of this, and then take that to the front of house. So both Ooh. things have your delays on it. Dave, do you know, does the headphone amp always have an IR on it? The headphone not if you turn the IR off. 
Okay, so it mirrors the um, balanced out, but it it's going through its own little mini amplifier for yes. the, mm -hmm. the headphone amp. Mm -hmm. So I, you could even, if you wanted to be fancy, you could get a little cable into a cable and run another line out of the headphones. You could. I don't know if that's maybe the best choice, but we could. By the way, I know we jumped into it pretty quickly. Um, what is how? What are you doing, Mike? You're just running the 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 balanced out right into your computer, right? That's yeah. What... Uh, Frank said my voice louder. I, should I turn it up over here, or Mark? Should you turn it up a little bit? Uh, if you could try it first. Yeah, I'll, I will turn it up over here. Is this any better? That is better. That's better. That's better. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So I am running. Into the IRX, I have a hardwire delay in the effects loop, and then I'm running out of the balanced out into the XLR input of my uh, API channel. Uh, the API channel is doing nothing. It has no gain coming on. It's just because it has an XLR input. Um, Dave, you'll, you, you could speak to the tech specs, but I've plugged balanced like that balanced in case anyone doesn't know that's the quarter inch that has two rings on it like a stereo cable mm -hmm. i plugged a standard guitar cable in i plugged it like xlr to balance just quarter to quarter it all sounds good it says balanced out but you could run it yeah you could run it with a quarter inch or some uh the only uh problem no you probably if you're just running it and not like Doing a complicated setup, you can probably just do anything pretty much. If there is some noise, run it balanced, and you can always use the ground lip switch if need be on it. Um, yeah, there's nothing in Michael's setup. It's the IRX direct in with the delay pedal in it. That's it. Yeah. Guitar and what's kind of cool, uh, or super cool, is okay, I'm not, let's say I, I do suggest when you get the IRX. If you have the ability to hook it up to the editor, it's super simple. Um, go through and pick your favorite IRs, mm -hmm. so that then you could probably never mm -hmm. turn the IR X editor on ever again if you're just not a software person. But it'll be dialed into what you like. Um, then over here, like if you, I have the delay on, right? If you hold down channel two. I didn't hold my finger slipped off. Sorry, gang. If you hold down channel two, that'll shut off the loop. And then if you hold down channel one, it will shut off the IR, which sounds horrible. But let's say you're going to run into some other thing that has an IR or you want to be able to add IRs later in your mix or something like that. Uh, you could turn it off without having to go into any kind of editor. That's very cool. And, and and also remember too, you know, this is set up for MIDI. So uh, what's MIDI about it is the channel switching on the amp. So anything, you know, that involves channel switching, it, no tone shaping, just the channel switching. Also the loop bypass is, is uh, MIDIable, the boost is MIDIable, of course. Uh, the IR bypass from preset to preset and mediable. I don't know why you would do that, but it is. And, uh, uh, you know, what IR you're using from preset to preset, you can do. The presence, the thump, that's all also from preset to preset. And, you know, at the top at, at the top of this editor, you can, you can, if you want to set up a preset, in other words. So right now we're at program change zero. At the top of the editor, it says program change zero. Um, if, uh, you wanted to set up a preset, just simply put it on the stuff you want on, put the IRs you want on anything that you have, and you just press store at the corner there and it will store it in one if, or not one in zero. If you go to, if you go to preset, if you hit program change one, see, that's something else is programmed or two, probably something else is programmed still, or maybe not, but it's not set up right now. But as you see. So you can store all these presets and then recall them with a MIDI controller. And you could there's also a lot of tone shaping with just the presence and thump and yeah. the I and the IRs alone, you know. Yeah. Uh, just function wise, you could also set the boost lock. So if you wanted to always have the maximum gain you could squeeze out of one and two channels, you could step on channel two and it instantly has the boost lock rather than having 
channel two and the boost real quick. You can set yeah. the boost lock over here. Um, we should clarify this also. Um, where was the question? Now I lost it. It was okay. Here it is. Uh, this goes straight into a cabinet only. No. You would yeah. No. No cabinet. And it's designed to go direct or into an effects loop return of an amplifier or into a full range cabinet. Um, that's how it's ideally designed. Or you if can you, get a you can get a power amp. You could yeah. get a power amp. Now you could come out of this and get, say like say a Seymour Duncan uh, little power stage. Uh, power stage thing. You could come out of Probably for that, because it's Class D power, it'd probably be great to come out of the, the balanced out without the IRs on, straight into that. And uh, because then you're you're getting kind of the power section thing that we have built in, meaning and, the, the SIM. And yeah. conversely, let's say you had um, like a Synergy SIN2 or something, you could run the SIN2 into the effects return of the IRX and use the IRs in there. So you could, yeah, you could you could set that up a variety of ways. It's a pretty serious toolbox, uh, and it sits very nicely in a pedal board. Actually, with the Sin too, think about this one. Now, I'm just thinking this off the top of my head. You could set up the front end of this, meaning the input and send as the external amp in the SIN2. And then you could come out of the main out of the SIN2 and come back into the return of this for this IRs, these IRs. So then you could switch any of the Synergy preamps or this preamp into the IR, the back end of this. Oh, that's awesome. That would work great, actually. Uh, I see my tube asked, I'm just doing a little test here. It says I don't hear a fan. There's no fan. There is no fan. And it barely gets warm. Yeah, barely. That, was another, that was a question here from Jordan. How hot does it get? No, nope. like doesn't get hot. Nah, it's probably picking up more heat from the lights and stuff. I mean, there's a. It's mildly warm. I'm hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dave, if I go out my go out of my effects send, is that an all analog signal path? Yes. Okay. Guitar life. Uh, hey, Dave, that was me that emailed you this morning. I want to run the front of house and FRFR cab. I want the extra oomph on stage. How would you do that with one balanced out? Well, let me um, let me answer you in the email. I just haven't got to it today because I was at the factory testing stuff. Uh, let me let me reread your email and because I think you had an MS3 involved and there there's a pretty cool way but I'll ask you some questions in the email. Um, Adam Gothridge, thank you. Uh, kudos by concept. This sounds ideal. One twenty volt price. Thanks. It uses a, a nine volt DC, eight hundred milliamps, I do believe, or six. I think it might actually draw a little less than that. Um, and so it has a, a transformer that it ships with, which is a universal transformer. So it comes with different uh, power plugs for different countries and stuff. And um, it also could be powered, like, for instance, say you had a Friedman power grid power supply. All you would need is a current doubler uh, cable which uh, they're made, Voodoo Lab makes them. Uh, so it was, um, so it was uh, one, one spot guys. Um, and it would, it'll be no issues being powered by the, by that. Uh, you could probably pi power it from a shocks power supply at nine volts. I think that might just be enough. Their standard nine volt on it, on their standard DC seven power supply. On these, uh, like I said, on the uh, True Tone power supplies, you'd need two of the 500 outputs and sum them with a current doubling cable. Voodoo Lab, Pedal Power 3, you would need two of them also and summed. 
this is pretty common for for uh you know like even even things like helixes and things like that you always have to deal with the higher current draw can you add your own irs you sure can yes yep. very easily you just go here you click on that folder and it just opens up a browser and uh you just drop it right in drop it right in it auto converts to the length it needs to be so if you have favorites from ml or uh, Celestian or um, Own Hammer or Red Wires or blah 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 onwards and onwards. Drop them in. Use your favorite. You know what they did that's cool is let's say you have your favorites and you lined up six of your favorites. You'll never lose the ones that came stock. They're burned in always. So you could always go back to stock. The stock ones that were in the top three say main next to it, but all of the others that ship with it are right there. You don't have to download anything. They always exist inside the unit. All right. How many IRs can you can you load up in there if you wanted to? Well, you can you load up to three per channel. I I the the whole premise. The only reason I didn't want some rotary encoder on this thing. You know, I didn't want it to have, you know, here's 10 IRs on this one channel and here's another 10 on the other channel. Mm -hmm. I I didn't like the look. I, I wanted to keep it simple. And frankly, everyone that I talked to was like, yeah, I use one IR. Pretty much, yeah. I, I picked my favorite and I use that one, maybe two. And so I was like, well, I'm putting a three-way switch on it. it just It's just much quicker and easier, you know, and it looks better. You don't have any, like digital encoders or anything yeah it's a lot like when you're miking a cabinet like once it sounds right you stop thinking about the microphones on the cabinet you mm -hmm. just start you're like oh i want a little more mids you're like yeah okay a little more mids like you wouldn't go back and adjust the mics for that when you're already in nice balance and there's so many good irs in this like that's what i was saying like find the IRs you like ahead of time and then you're kind of done on your IRs yeah. but or you don't have to because the the stock three even just you know that one on the left Dave's uh that naked cab is really balanced and sounds really good for everything uh what MIDI switcher do you all recommend Jordan Brooks um I think for if you're just like dabbling in MIDI and you don't have major requirements where you need X, Y, and Z and massive stuff, the hot, I'm going to say Hotone, but hot one, uh, little four banger that you could get for like a hundred bucks on Amazon. It works great. It's very, really easy to program. That's what I used in my video to show the MIDI capability. Super simple. Hmm. Okay. Um... Is it going to be available in rack format? I see. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Not the, the special Michael Torrin version. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not currently. That would be cool, though. Not that currently. Would cool. That would be very cool. Someone had posted a minute ago, like uh, about the heat, like play for you know an hour and then feel it again. I've played it all day. It doesn't get hot. It that's the heat. It is what it is. You know, it, it feels good. Let me show you um, channel one. I'm not going to get the you know sparkling as cleans because of the last Paul, but I'm going to channel one. No boost. I'm gonna. I'll let me take this off. I know. I hear nose. Oh, tuner. <laughs> So you easily go from that. Oh, I'm in drop D. Now all you guys really know how many takes it takes for Michael to finish oh, a video. You have no <laughs> idea. No idea. There's so many. I am the worst demo person uh, ever. Just, I didn't tell Dave ahead of time. You're making a huge mistake. Uh, there's a three-way bright switch. 
on the clean channel, which doesn't exist on the channel two. So channel two has a tight for the bottom. Channel one has bright, uh, bright switch there. You know, it's really similar to what's on Dave's amps. Uh, so if you know how the bright switches work there, it sounds to me the same. Um, yeah, and so you hear it goes from crystal clean to ACDC uh, without the boost. I didn't even put the boost on here. That sounds awesome. Yeah, and you can even dial back the, to a cleaner sound and then boost yeah. it up to where it was like it, when it was on 10. So, you know, it it's, works awesome. And it takes pedals perfectly well because I'm sure someone will say, like, does it take pedals? It takes pedals as well as any of Dave's amps. It sounds good. And the beauty of the boost also is if, if you know, you're playing live and you want to go for that solo and you have the volume boost, mm -hmm. it can give you not only a little bit more gain but also more volume. And and you can turn you can turn if you don't want a gain boost and you just want a volume boost you can also turn the gain trimmers on the side of the box down to nothing. So if you turn those down to nothing, all you have is a, another master that it goes to. You know. All right, I'm gonna try that. And you could use your fingernail, which was very nice. You don't have to like pull out a weird screwdriver or anything. It's yeah, you can like use the side of the pick or your fingernail. Knock. It's really easy to do. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a hair of, oh, and it could be coming from, from the volume. Yeah, it's super minimal. And then you just get a volume boost off of there. So you yep. could go uh, no volume. Hello. Yep. Um, we have Asheville guy. How many IRs can you load on the device, and how does it feel when playing? I can address when it feels like an amp when you're playing. It doesn't feel like a modeler. That's for sure. It doesn't kind of have that hue. You know what I mean? That like that modeler. Modelers have this sort of, to me, have this sort of like hue over them. You know, it's like a little, like there's a slight sheet over the top of. Uh, of them in some respects, you know, mm. and it doesn't feel quite. This feels like my amps. I mean, I I literally took this pre when when we were first doing this. I took this preamp and I took a B100 Deluxe amp and I took a switcher, and I was switching. Okay, here's the Plexi channel on the B100 Deluxe. Here's this Plexi channel. I was switching in real time as I was playing. We dialed them in where you couldn't even tell. You know, same same thing with the other channel. You know, so same thing with the HB channel. You couldn't tell. That's going into the BE power section, you know. So I, I was just testing the how close the, the preamp was, you know. Yeah. And as far as how many IRs can you load on the device? Uh, IRs, you can load three, three different ones per channel that you can use and switch between. There are 12 IRs on the device that we have given you. Um, but if you want to switch between them and stuff, you can load three per channel. Now, what about when, if you wanted to load your own IRs, how many can you load into the box itself? Three per channel. Just three? Yep. That's it. That's it. I see. Yep. Okay. And as Michael said, the other, the other IRs will stay. Yep. They're the baked, they're baked in, so you never lose them. So okay. if you, you later decide, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if I like that one. Uh, yeah. Go back to the one that was there. Yeah. Yep, and again, nope. the the presence and thump being programmable completely changes an IR. So if you have a balanced IR, like Dave's, that 6402 is really balanced and, and woody. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of like extra top end and it doesn't have a ton of subsonics on there, but you just shift the presence and thump over to the side. If you love that IR, it's there's so many more variations on the IRs that are already in yeah. here. It's a cabinet. You're dialing in your amp for the cabinet. Yeah. You know? It's a... And then there's these things, too, which work nicely. Yeah. And don't be afraid. Yeah, I mean, look, it's this cracked me up when I first got it, that 
almost everything I was doing was 11 30 12 12 30 mm-hmm. almost everything it just sounds good and that we were joking nonstop. I had just come out of, I think, trying a bunch of different products that was like, oh, you're spending all day. Change, well, maybe I'll change a different model. Maybe I'll change a different IR. Like, you just don't have to do that. You just turn it on, set everything to 12 o'clock. And you're like, oh, I, now I could go back to playing guitar. I don't have to, you know, become a yeah. computer programmer. Cable in, cable out, hit a chord, everything at noon. Okay, that's pretty close. Dial in your last little knob settings and you're finished. You know, it's, 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 I said this in the video, you know, it, it's so many things have gotten exceptionally complicated over the years in, in how they program, I, I find. They make it exceptionally hard. I, I, I actually feel stuff that, you know, used a lot of MIDI back, you know, in, in yesteryear, so to speak. Uh, was easier to use <laughs> you know the pod, it, the pod was know, so easy to use it just doesn't know, sound that good now yeah it just doesn't sound that good but you know it just you know you start uh, one of the videos that we watched dan leggett dan leggett's a good friend of ours and he, he he said something really great in this he goes you know you know you can have a kemper you can dial it in great you can you know if you have time to dial it in for your gig he goes but he goes, if you're going somewhere unfamiliar or playing an unfamiliar gig and you try to use that, he goes, it's it's a whole world of hell, you know, because you can't quickly change things and you can't get the sound quickly, you know. And oh, yeah, yes, yeah. it's like, I don't have enough gain. OK, great. Boom. More gain. Done. You know, you know, I can, I, I can just take it. If I have to go direct, I go direct with it, and we're we're finished. We're we're game over. So, and and also, if you have a pedal board already, as most people do, you know, that you know they have all their favorite things. You know, their favorite Strymons and favorite whatever pedal, Earthquaker, whatever pedals they like. You know, you can you know you can add this and have a direct solution then, without overcomplicating your life. And without getting familiar with a whole new set of effects. Right. You know, that don't have knobs. And again, you have to go into deep pages with, you know, and, and, and that's the point. It's like, it's like, you know, to, to give the guitar player a tool that he can use effectively quickly. Uh, I'm going to, I've been looking at the chat. I'm going to answer a bunch of, Really quick ones. Uh, the effects loop, you could you could throw like it's mono. It's a mono effects loop, but you could throw something in the effects loop like a, a room reverb and a delay, and then put on headphones, and you'll hear that in the headphones. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really satisfying, even though it's mono, because you, it, you just still feel connected. I don't know. There's something about the the tube hitting a tube in the beginning. I think it it sounds great. And uh, uh, feels great. Uh, the switches are silent; they don't click, and you could hear. That's just the physical that you're hearing, but they don't. There's no clicking between the presets. Yeah, and you hear there's no sound. I mean, we're going from high gain, and that's that's a lot of gain, and it's quite quiet. It's not like a chuggy guitar, but it's quite quiet. Like, I wouldn't even bother with a noise gate or anything on that. Mm -hmm. And then jumping back and forth, there's no pops and clicks or anything, of course. Seamless. Yeah. Um, So Braxel has a question. Are you going to make more of the colorway edition with the Marshall knobs, or is that just going to be the 100 only? Well, okay. Well, Mark, well, we'll bring this up. So we have one here. So this is a, a custom shop one, and uh, uh, the first first 100 of these, we're going to make more of these if, if people like them and they'd like to buy them. We are going to make more of these, uh, but the first um, 100 I signed, So and those are available on the Friedman Shop on Reverb. Yeah, so you can see the difference. Exclusive with reverb for the signed ones. 
inverted colors, Marshall mm -hmm. knobs, and signed by Dave. I mean, we we have always offered, you know, even like on some other products, we've offered, uh, you know, uh, the BOD Deluxe pedal that we had. We offered a Clockworks version, which was a different, um, different cosmetic and stuff. So we've always kind of offered that stuff. Yeah, super cool. Uh, Gear Page nerds want to know why the digital back end, meaning the effects return and balance outs, are not stereo. Again, uh, so this pedal, right, is smaller than a Strymon pedal. It's a little bit, a little bit narrower than a Strymon. Um, yeah, I'm, it's hard. To, I wish I had a Strymon just sitting here. I actually probably do in the other room, but uh, it's as small as it can be. It doesn't necessarily have to be stereo. So, like for instance, let's say you want to. Uh, run this stereo direct. Okay, you're going direct to front of house stereo. You can come out of the balanced out uh, with the with the I, IR of your choice, and you can run it into your stereo effects. And then you can come off your board with either direct off or into a DI box, and have a stereo rig completely. Or you could do even a more elaborate deal, and you could buy two of these where it's like having two amplifiers blended on a board, which could be really cool, too, you know, uh, and, and run it stereo that way. There's, there's, there's a multitude of ways to hook this up. M mainly, the reason is it wouldn't be this small if it was stereo. Yeah. Which simply, literally, if I was going to make it stereo, I'd probably have XLRs, and it would be another four inches wide. Yeah, it's, you know. Um, Javier Montoya, what's up? Hey, huge congrats, Dave. My unit arrives tomorrow, and I already know it's the best of all time unit. Are the masters after the return, or do they emulate some power amp squish as they get turned up? Thanks. The masters are before uh the return uh i'm pretty sure i'm pretty positive they're before the return uh and uh now i'm second guessing myself but <laughs> uh no they are they are before because they're they they dictate what comes out the sand so yes uh and uh will you get power amp squish when you turn it up not particularly, but you know, you got to think about this. You know, let's say you're using one of my 100 watt amps. Are you ever actually going to get it where there's power amp squish? No. Uh, I sure. mean, unless you're in some crazy thing and you're right, running, you're, playing you're, Wembley. you're running at like seven or eight or you know, on the knob, you know. Yeah, unless you're um, Jakey Lee. <laughs> not really and, my, and most of my stuff isn't really designed to do that per se you know i i do when i was developing this i, I must say i did i did an interesting test so i took my um i took my 50 watt plexi that sort of everything was spawned off of in my life and i loaded it down with a fry at power load and i put the front end of this and the front and that whole system in it in the loop switcher and i switched between the two into the return of this and direct so i was able to completely emulate all sorts of settings on my plexi with it like it did an amazing job i you know once that once once i did that test i was like okay <laughs> i think we're i think we're here you know yep there's a couple other things i saw here uh like in terms of stereo you don't have to use the effects loop. You could just go straight out of this. Like, if you came yeah, out of I this mentioned. into an H90, like, your stereo, and you're, you're rocking. Someone else said, is this good into, like, a, a Fender? Uh, I would say no, because it's not a distortion pedal, just to reiterate in case anyone came in later from what Dave said. It's not a distortion pedal. It's not an overdrive pedal. It's a full preamp. If you showed up to a gig and they had, like, a Hot Rod Deluxe, those have like power amp input 
So just run this into that and that will sound great. Mm -hmm. But not into the input of the amp. No. Although frankly, I've never tried it. That's a good point. Neither have I. <laughs> you, 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 you potentially, it might be a little weird with the IRs and stuff, but you know, you, you potentially could maybe do it. Uh, in a pinch, clean. in a pinch, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so there's a few questions. How much? So it's four ninety nine in the U.S. Right, Dave? Mm -hmm. And the exclusive reverb unit that you can go on, and it's the Friedman page that's selling it on reverb. This is five ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Exclusive first one hundred signed by Dave. All right. Um, Someone asked if it takes pedals that I'm going to go on fly by the seat of my pants here. And I plugged in a, um, a little two TS screamer nine. Uh, so I don't know. I'm going to try not to overload the, the or I'll try to make a sound at all. OK, so. You could probably turn the guitar up a little bit. Oh, good. Let's do that. You're turning the gain up a little bit on the uh, on the channel. There you go. Or you just go here. options but it takes pedals perfectly well it's like running into one of dave's amps yep uh question did you see robert keely's new pedal i did the see robert keely's noble uh, the, screamer the, the noble screamer it looks awesome it. yeah it's beautiful and uh I, it's it's intriguing because I, I just thought i mentioned it because we you pulled out a tube screamer uh i, I thought it was intriguing because of the combination things you could do with it mm-hmm you know that that's what makes it kind of neat very yeah very unique yeah get different tones uh jeffrey and, and another thing mm -hmm. out of all those videos tom bukovac is a motherfucker <laughs> so good. he's so, so good so good oh, just yeah. so good his hands are so good yeah you hear that tom you're <laughs> awesome uh hey dave congrats on the new product how would i use this with a fractal FM9. Well, well, there's all sorts of ways you could probably hook this up. I mean, you could use this as a preamp going into the fractal, and you could actually use the IRs in stereo out of the fractal if you want to do that. You can just turn the IRs, IRs off in this. And then it's like, uh, if you use the balanced out, it's like, uh, look at it this way. It's like a big slaved tube amp. That's how I look at it, you know, like if you're going to use the balanced out to feed a power amp or something, it's like the old days when we used to load down a Marshall with a reactive load and use that as a preamp in a rig. So that sounds killer that way because you still get the power amp sim too. Uh, so this question's come up a few times. So how will this compete with a Tone X? Uh, well... Okay, so the Tone X is, you know, it, it, you have to make your sounds. You know, you, you have to sit and capture your sounds, and you have to do... Michael can maybe attest to that process. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that process sucks. Um, you know, I think, um, in all honesty, if you want, like, a very specific sound, or you want some dumbbell sounds or you want like some of the things I've captured and that like it does that well but there is a difference when you plug in like there's some you feel the lower latency when you would when you hit the the tubes on like a real analog front end um sometimes it takes a minute to hear like if I spend a month in digital world and then I come back I don't know it has a digital back end but you'll notice you'll go oh that's Super low latency, though. You're like that's what uh, an analog uh, circuit feels like, um, and nothing will give you the Friedman sound really like 
this, to be honest. I mean, it's great. And you could dial it in to be your Friedman sound because you could sweep the EQ knobs wherever. You could low gain, high gain. I mean, that's the thing with the, the real amps. Like, I love the digital stuff too, but you're even with like Tonex and the, the latest stuff, you're still getting a slice, like this moment in time. Like, that's the sound. And then everything is like, oh, okay, we'll tweak that moment in sound. The amps and the tube stuff, it's like it's infinite rainbows of spectrum. You, you want a little less of this, and every sound sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's great. Yeah. Ian Ferguson, uh, the Michael Torrin edition would be awesome. <laughs> the ultimate guitar nerd in joke. Yeah. Um, let me run through real quick one more time. The guys were saying that uh, I need to turn off my talking mic so they don't hear click clack. Uh, when oh, I just click clack on the strings. Okay, yeah, there you go. Don't hear anything though. No. Michael, we don't hear you. Oh, it mutes. Yeah. Uh, it mutes everything. Oh, wait, let me see here. You got oh. Can I do you this? Mute the mic preamp or do something? You could probably increase the volume too. There we go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Basic run through, but I mean, like we mentioned before, if you get in with the, if you if I switch the IR to a different IR, everything changes. Like the whole character of the box sort of changes. It's like, yeah. If yeah you, like for instance, let's let's just do that. Let's go crazy with this. Switch the same sound you had, but switch to an EV. Boost the presence of them. There we go. That sounds brutal. See all that all that starts to come in. So you know you you dial in the amp around your cabinet just like just like you would if you plugged an amp head into a cabinet, you know, you just dial in your amp around the cabinet. And, uh, you know, EVs are kind of cool, actually, you know, that's, you know, you think about all the people that used them, Neil Giraldo and uh, uh, Zach Wilde and Jakey Lee. And uh, there, there's, there, there is a thing about those. Hmm. But we, we just wanted to go to something totally different, you know, and then, and then you dial in the amp around that cabinet, you know. Yep. James B, thank you. Great product. Blown away by how good it sounds. Seriously, two questions. Why no USB-C? And why not run stereo DSP for the effects return and outputs? Thank you. 
stereo DSP. Oh well, well, I think we already answered the the stereo part. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, as far as USB C, well, that's a very good question. <laughs> I don't know if I have that answer right now. <clears throat> it's a new. It's a you know. It's like the new. Your mic's thing. muted. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I would love personally USB C, but if because I have a newish computer, but on a like an older laptop, it could cause a problem. It's easy enough to have like I have to have these little to USB C converters everywhere in my house because the world is has isn't all USB C. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a weird thing. It's it's um, almost there, but yeah, getting there. Yeah, maybe a next version of something. And also, actually, the the larger connector is a little more robust too than the USB C. To be honest, uh, as far as durability, I've got those cables everywhere. You'll, I'll never run out of USB. Uh, whatever I got, I got so <laughs> irritated because it seemed like every product I, I would get there would be a different fucking USB connector on it. Oh yeah, and mm-hmm. and I, I'm like, all right, hold on a minute. I'm gonna go on Amazon right now. And I want to buy every USB every USB variation I can find, just so I have it. Because you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that are that way. Our JM MIDI controllers are are the same as ours. You know, um, uh, Boss. Some of the Boss stuff is the same, and then some of the newer Boss stuff is the smaller. And and then there's all the variations in between that I've seen on products too. And it's just like going, okay, which one is it? I don't even know the the names of them all. Um, Christian Daniel, can you use it to practice with, practice with headphones only? Yes. Yeah, you sure can. Yep. Just power it up and put your headphones in it. It's super easy. Uh, I, I yep. just I down tuned. I'm going back in. One second. Someone asked, what does it sound like down tuned? I have no idea. We'll see. We still on the EV. Maybe turn the treble back down a little bit. Oh no, the presence out with the treble knob down. A little, yeah. You still have the tube screamer hooked up, and then yeah, turn the turn the gain all the way down, and then just use the tone and the boost. There we go. The quintessential, generally speaking, everyone uses a tube screamer tune that way, just as a high pass filter kind of thing for tune down. It sounds, it sounds good. I have so many buttons. <laughs> <laughs> like Homer Simpson on the fucking board. Yeah. Um, and yes, this they do make rack drawers, which reminds me, go to fixpedalboards.com. Yes, to buy your really nice rack shelf if you'd like to mount that or and or pedals on a rack shelf with, with a switcher or something, you know. Yep. Yep. And, and also, guys, make sure you go to um, go to Sweetwater, Sweetwater and Tomon and the links that we provide below, and you can you can buy this unit there, or you can go to the Friedman Amplification website and get the unit, um, or uh, Reverb. Yep. Or if you can't get it from one of those places, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, make sure you press subscribe and click the bell, please, guys. Michael, what do you got there? It's missing something. It's missing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoosh. 
Someone asked, like, can you tune down to A? No, but this is as low as I can go, and I don't know how to play the seventh string. I tried it once, and I haven't unpacked it again. So hang on one second. <laughs> I would do the same thing. Yeah, still works. Yeah. What's up, Pete? Pete. Hey. Great video again. Pete, Pete did an awesome video. And uh, as he said, he used, uh, surprisingly, as he said in his video, he used uh, a variety of IRs in the video for different parts. I think he used the EV for something somewhere in the video. I think he mentioned. I didn't watch the whole video yet. <laughs> I've watched pieces of it. I was here while he was doing it at the very last second, though. <laughs> <laughs> sounded great. Yeah, sounded yeah. amazing, as usual. Colin James, uh, does the power amp sim stay on yeah. when IRs are disengaged? Yes. But it's not on the effects send, send correct? Correct. Okay. It's not on the effects send. I actually really like it that way. I like to use it like... I looked at it like a loaded down amplifier. So like, you know, back years ago, that was the thing. I used to load down my Marshall with an I, with a reactive load and, you know, fed that through effects into a, a system, you know? And so that, you know, that's essentially what you're doing right there. You know, you're getting that, the power amp sound too, you know? Uh, the switches are soft. Yes. Soft, silent. Yep. Um, Guitar for a Cure. What's going on, Peter? How are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Um, I, I don't think this will happen. When will units like these replace full-on amps? It's. I mean, you know, like Joe Bonamassa said, you know, he, you know, he he had some nice quotes on our show about. There is a volume interaction between the guitar and a real amp, you know, and when you start losing some of that, uh, you're losing a lot, you know. There's just there's a thing about a, 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 a reason. It doesn't even have to be exceptionally loud, but just a reasonably loud amp. There's an interaction. But there's many circumstances when that's maybe not possible these days, and you know, the idea is to come up with a product that gives you a simplistic approach that is quick and easy. And it's like, it's just like your amplifier, just in a direct form, you know, yep. that you can, you can, you can dial this in quickly. No pages, no menus, no nothing. No, no, you know, you don't have to hook it up to the computer even, you know, you know, I'm just maybe to store some presets. You don't actually even have to hook it up to the, computer to store presets <laughs> just some of the more advanced editing like uh presence and thump and things like that mm -hmm. uh so peter yeah uh guitar for a cure so once the ir is loaded you can run this straight into your daw and the cab sim is set that's what we're doing it's just a guitar in out straight into michael's computer Boom. he's got a he's got a delay in the loop and right now, a tube screamer in front. We were just messing with just to see, show people what it what that did. I think it worked really cool on heavier stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's typical for that kind of heavy guy. They always use like a tube screamer. Uh, yes, yeah, so it has an effects loop, and it can work with a fry at power station. The power station would be the power amp, and sure, absolutely. Yeah, you know. Um, also, you know, also you can buy this box, so you can buy this thing for four ninety nine. And you know, if you're just at home, you you have a, a Fender Deville, and you don't really have a ton of money. You know, you can you can buy this unit and plug it just into the return of your Deville sitting at home, and get those Friedman sounds that you'd like to have, but maybe you can't afford a four thousand dollar amp. You know. Um. You heard Dave mention that the IRs are based off the two notes dying IR ones. No, they are the same, some of the same cabinets. They are not 
uh, based off the two notes IR. Right, the same cabinet. The same cabinets I own, but it was IRs that we captured. Right. But if you uh, are, like, you know, people get super attached to certain components. If you want to use your Dyne IRs, it's really easy to turn off the IRs in the IRX. And you have the full tube front end. And you could run into, like, either a Cab M or the, the Wall of Sound software. Apply sure. your IR later, afterwards. Yep. Yeah, and if you want to use your Pete Thorne or Big Harry guitar, yeah, just IRs. turn off the IR and go straight into your computer, and then just pull up the 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 um, two note software and pull up whatever patch you have. You know, yep. yeah, easy. Um, let's see. Jamie Brown, Dave, possible AC thirty ish preamp when you're finished with the amp version. Probably not. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I actually have an artist that I'm, I'm kind of interested in that for. So uh, I don't know. We'll see. I have a little thing I'm messing with. Maybe we'll see. Uh, how can it not get hot if it has tubes at full voltage? It's two 12AX7s. It's not power tubes. In, in an amp, what gets really hot is power tubes. I mean, it gets warm. Yeah, it's not... not it's not hot. It's warm. It's just warm. It's, like it's the, less warm than my like my converters for the computer, the interface. The interface gets hot as balls. This is just warm. Yeah. Uh, that Tyler is smoking. Yeah. And the IRX great sounds Tyler. great. Yeah, that Tyler is so cool. Uh, I know we've covered this before, but for Marcel, we'll do it again. Uh, do you need a powered speaker cabinet to plug this into? What are you playing out of? This is going direct into the computer. So this this is completely direct. So if you have studio monitors or a studio or an interface or something like that, you can just plug it into that. You could also plug it in into a full range monitor such as the Friedman ones or the Headrush ones or there's a ton ton of them out there or you can turn the IRs off and go into the effects loop return of an amplifier either using the send or the balanced out like I have out there I have a um, little sister head with a into a uh, Dirty Shirley 112 that sounds awesome that has an effects loop and this sounds awesome through that. And they're they're completely different animals. I mean, the yeah. little sister is that big, fat, warm thing. And then this instantly just, it becomes like this Friedman rock thing. It's great. Um, well, Jordan Ziff is using this for new music. Um, he just yeah, wrote, I mean, this is a brand new product. So yeah. uh, 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 not many yet. It just came out. Just came I wrote out. a song with it. You know, yeah he, yeah, he did a song. Jordan did a song. Pete did a song. There's a lot of new music that came out with it. Today. <laughs> check, check out YouTube today and look we up our make a compilation album just today. Sean Tubbs' video is coming in, in sometime Ooh. in a week or so. So, you know, that'll be that'll be a different side of it, I think. You know? You might be waiting a long time if you're going to wait for the rack version. Just get a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> and put two. Yeah. I really love the idea of making, I think I'm going to do it actually too. I might do a pedal board build video or something maybe, or just showing a rig where you could take two of these. And if you hooked it up with a switcher, you could literally switch either preamp sections into, you know, stereo effects into the, the two returns of the units and come out stereo with IRs and uh, you know you'd have an amazing little stereo rig with you know eight channels <laughs> amazing ish eight channels ish here's an idea all MIDI controlled will you do other versions of this platform such as such as this Steve Stevens Jakey Lee or other varieties who knows too new can't can't say yet it looks fucking cool, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. It does. <laughs> uh, um, by the way, because I keep seeing, like, can it go into this? Can it go into this? 
it can go into anything. I took my kids were doing a, a talent show, you know, like Battle of the Bands thing, and I brought it to a rehearsal studio that had like this the worst crate something. I didn't even know what it was. I'm like, I'm not plugging into this. And I, I ran this into its effects loop and it sounded awesome. There you like, go. It sounds as good everywhere and it's it fits into your gig bag, which is quite nice. This was nice to hear too. Uh, this was the only product of 2023 where I felt like it wasn't actually ridiculously priced. Props. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. That, we, we tried. I can't guarantee, you know, forever that it'll be at that price, but there's a. It's amazing what happens over time. Oh dang! That's the, you better buy it now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Certain uh, things. Are but I don't think it would be much different. So. Yeah. <laughs> does it take guitars well? <laughs> I like that comment. Yes, it does. Take <laughs> well, no, I don't well. think we can need to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a, here's one. So I I did something with a friend of mine. Uh, there was a um, an old song that I had written with him years ago, and he was doing a remake of it, a, a new version of it, and um, and I'm like. And he wanted me to play on it. I'm like, God, God, I haven't played this. Come on, really? You want me to play on this? And uh, I'm like, all right, fine. He finally talked me into it. And I took the this unit to record with, just plugging it in. And the bass player, who's uh, Jurgen Jurgen Carlson, uh, was like, you, what, that? Well, sh sh shush. Plugged in, he's like, "Oh yeah." So then we tried <laughs> it on bass. He, he he was the bass player with Government Mule. Oh, yeah, amazing. He plays with Steve Lukather sometimes. He's an amazing bass player. And we we put and he likes like amp amps for bass. You know, like distorted Marshall Lee sort of amps for bass. And so we put it. We used it for bass. <laughs> and we we were just checking it out. Would would it work on bass? <laughs> Worked great. Sounded yeah. amazing on bass. Especially in the Plexi channel. Oh yeah. I was oh gonna, yeah. I was gonna ask the channel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we we did both actually, but it worked well. Uh, Coxie fifty one fifty. I'm keen to hear the recommended solution to run four cable method with an FRFR on stage and feed to front of house. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, you know, if you if you want to feed uh, your FF, uh, FRFR and front of house, you're going to have to come out of this and and split in some fashion. So that so there's uh, some good little boxes that we've found recently on Amazon. Is that the you thing know? you recommended to me? Yeah, Did you I get have one. one. I'll, yeah, I'll grab it. So so it's it's literally a it's a it's just a passive splitter. It's a headphone splitter, right? So um, this is a TRS control, and um, now I hear an echo. <laughs> this is a, a TRS control, and uh, uh, it's just a splitter. So you could literally come out of the, the um, balanced out into this box, and uh, you have uh, you know another four or five outputs after you come out of that. So then you could split one to front of house and one to your uh, FR, FRFR on stage. Um, you know, that's, that's just a really five. simple, super cheap little splitter. That yeah, I think this was like found. 30 bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's other ways you can do it. I mean, if you have a custom board built or something, whoever's doing it can build you a little box that will split out, you know, certain ways. It's easy to do. It's just, you're just splitting a balanced signal. Um, as far as the four cable method, the rest of it is just, you know, stuff in the loop of your four cable, stuff in front, and done. Yeah, Mark, this is a special edition, and it's it's a reverb special. Yeah, it's just a different look, man. It's just a, a different look, a different cosmetic. It's a, uh, the first hundred are signed. Yeah, that's, that's it. It's something kind of cool. Uh, how would you use this with a mini BE30? I'd just use the power amp to the mini BE30 B and just use this as your preamp. You're done. You got the best of both worlds. 
And probably if you do that, I would leave. I would come out the balanced out and just turn the IRs off. Because then you're getting that power amp sim also, which is which is uh, greatly enhancing, uh, you know, you can use the presence and thump and stuff and great, great, greatly enhance the sound of the Class D power amp that's in the, the B30. So great to see advanced equipment that are really usable, built at pro level quality at reasonable price. Cool. Thank you. Good to hear. Um, so glad I passed on the Tonex. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man! Oh, Mike Torn. I see Mike Torn's here somewhere. Here he is. Leon Todd's here too. He had a good video. Leon today. Todd. I he haven't seen his. I haven't seen your video yet. I'm oh yeah, away. Leon's video is great. I, I, you gotta understand. Like, I was up late talking to our web guy and then <laughs> to making sure stuff was done. And then I saw a few of the videos that came out first, and then I had to work all day, so I haven't seen them all yet. I kind of skimmed a few of them, Andertons and uh, Dan Leggett and Keats, and I've seen Michael's for a long time now, so I know what his was. <laughs> Someone asked the difference between this and an amp, uh, between this and an amp, and a thing to remember, like, this doesn't have a power amp in it, so it's just the preamp section, so... Uh, Not an amp. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. You have to plug it. It's really meant to go it's irx so it has the irs it goes direct in but it very easily goes into the effects return or power amp or anything like that um i guess it's possible to plug it into the input but that remains to be seen but it's designed it's a preamp so it's it still has to go into some sort of power amp or just direct into your recording rig or mixer powered speaker whatever yeah Vinny, what's going on, buddy? Congrats, Dave. This is awesome. Um, which this reminds me, guys, we are going to be coming out with Tone Talk and Signa Music branded uh, cables. High quality Belden cables. Limited edition cables with Vinny. Um, once he gets the Belden cable, we're going to start doing it and we're going to offer it through the... Through uh, okay. You know, through the you know, through our show, basically, and then uh, then we'll also be doing Patreon at some point soon, uh, and we're going to be offering discounts for certain vendors, certain pe certain people who have been on the show. They'll give discounts to Patreon members. We'll be giving uh, like Vinny will give discounts on his cables. We'll offer certain exclusives and things like that for people who belong to our Patreon. So we're going to get that going sometime soon. All right, and Vinny, once he gets the cables, he'll let us know, and we'll get we'll make the announcement soon on that. Uh, apparently, the Tomon demo was great. Good, check check yes, out. Yes, it was the first uh, Chris that was playing at the beginning. He played a like a journey riff or something, and it was uh, it was awesome sounding. It was good. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Someone asked, "Where's the special edition available?" Reverb. Reverb. What are you sipping on, Dave? Uh, tonight was Belvini Scotch. Uh oh, well, there you go. Because that's what was sitting here. <laughs> uh, cool. And yes, I'm sure he's celebrating today. Big day. Uh, I'm sure I'm celebrating. I don't know if I'm totally celebrating, but yeah. It, it's a good day. <laughs> now, this is water I'm sipping. I'm just going through the rest of the questions here. Let me see. Did I miss any uh, super chats? <laughs> yes, I did. I get the, the Bradley Wood said, I'm, I get the feeling that a lot of folks don't understand what a preamp is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it could be, yes. Yes. Well, it's, yeah. How to incorporate an FRR, FRFR in front of house simultaneously? Split or the balanced out. There's a little tiny box you can buy off Amazon that you could do it with. Um, uh, that'll give you multiple, will give you a million balanced out. Well, not a million, but six. Uh, okay. The, the difference on the custom shop one is, is just aesthetic, right? 
Yeah, just the aesthetic and the sign. Yep. Yep. That's it. Same thing. Can you explain how that says Dave Friedman in that signature? I can't. <laughs> I can't explain. That looks like Klingon language. Yeah. No. Sorry. I can't. I don't see well, Dave first, Friedman well, first in that of all, at all. Well, the well, the first I see one a D. Is David. I see a D. And and the other one is sort of an F, and then it's a scribble. It looks more like a phallic thing. <laughs> How does your signature look, Michael? Mine is very lovely. It's like oh, it's it? very like water waves. Nice. Michael Neal. I've almost forgotten how to like do like cursive. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, it's usually it's like something I learned Dave. in school. Of course, now that people, kids don't even learn it. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm crazy. not sure they write anymore. Actually, yeah. Um, and uh, and you know, and also if you're signing a hundred of them, I it's just it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just, uh, uh, but that is how it is normally, even the first one. So, <laughs> yeah, it looks like shit. <laughs> Sorry, but that's my signature. It just, I just don't see Dave Friedman written in there. Uh, so that's, that's yeah. Funny. It's better than writing your like well, legal okay, signature. Like, okay, let, let, see. my dad was a doctor. Does that say anything? Oh yeah, done. That's doctor. all you had to say. You can't read doctors' writing either, generally. But you don't write lefty though, right? You're, you're no, writing. I don't write. I don't smudge the page. Okay. Yeah, I do that. That's my problem. Uh, sorry, I meant masters after the effects loop overall. I was wondering if the masters and boost levels would hit my effects harder or if it's just traditional line they level. Would, they, would, they, would, they would change the level to your effects a little bit, yeah. But you're generally not like... When you're boosting something like that, you're generally not boosting it massively. You know what I mean? It's It's... it's you're boosting it a little bit, and that that's okay. It hits it a little harder. Okay. Um, it's an instrument level effects loop, by the way. Or somewhere in between. Is there latency when switching channels? I didn't see any latency. Well, it's pretty much instantaneous. I mean, there is there is a little, there's a mute circuit that, you know, prevents stuff from popping and things like that. But there's not really any latency. So, you know, not any more than any other amplifier. Sorry, I don't have much experience with IRs. Is it still able to feed back with a cranked amp head? Sure. If you plug it into the return of a, a cranked amp head, sure. Uh, can it go in front of an amp? So we said maybe. <laughs> Not ideally suited for that application, but could it? Someone's going to have to tell me because I've never actually even bothered to try. It's likely it has to be a super clean amp, though. Yeah. Could you maybe EQ a Fender channel to maybe kind of work with it with the presence and everything else that you deal with on that and EQing it a certain way? Yeah, maybe. Now I gotta try this. <laughs> uh, a uh, Row Camp fifty six uh, had a super chat that failed, but uh, he was asking what's the best tube or solid state power amp for this. What do you think, Dave? Oh man, um, I mean the, I mean like if you're if you're talking a tube power amp or something, I mean you know. You know, something from Fryette might be cool, but I mean, maybe that's just too much. You know, uh, the the Duncan one couldn't get passable results. I, I don't know if it's the ultimate best for it. If you the, are using a power amp, though, like a like a Class D style power amp or something, I would definitely come out the balance that without the IRs on because. The power amp sim with the presence and thump, you're going to need that presence and thump because you need to get it a little brighter and a little more oomph on the low end with the Class D style power amps like like the Duncan or something. The power station does sound good with it. It's kind of no-brainer. If you want to go crazy, you can get buy a BE100 Deluxe and run into that. <laughs> that is the best power amp for it. And then get a switcher and do an elaborate rig where you have eight, <laughs> like a million channels. Yep. 
um you know uh you, you know there's other things too i mean there's a whole bunch of other like there's quilter power amps and little things some of the, some of them i haven't even tried with this so there's it, there's just other, sa- it does sound good with everything though there's other it, it's small really solutions valuable. that you could you know that could work there's um the uh, um isp makes one that's really good that isn't a class d amp which is cool because it has a little more guts hmm um okay this is funny one thing is for certain no matter what you uh, could have called it nothing could have been worse than naming it fucking horse meat (laughs) (laughs) yeah that was a pretty stupid name um wait what's what's fucking horse meat though the Who, PRS. Um, that's a PRS. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Supposed, we're supposed yeah. to be the clone killer. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's a question, Alex. If you're using a balanced out to go into a Fender Deville or Deluxe, would you recommend turning the presence down on the Fender because of the power amp sim on the IRX? Um. Um, you know, if you're going into a Deville, you maybe you could use the send of it. Just try it. Try it both ways. You know, it's it it's what whatever floats your boat. You know, whatever sounds better to you. It's fine. Yeah, just keep in mind. Um, you only have access to the presence and the thump through the USB editor, so uh, you would have to have like a laptop or computer nearby to experiment with that. But it would be easy enough to plug in the balanced out and then plug in the effects send and see which mm-hmm. one sounds better. Yeah. I'm not sure what FS is. Can one FS by configure to change between channels and another FS to change between two presets? Foot switch? Foot switch. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have no idea exactly what you're saying here, but... Um, you can't reconfigure what the foot switches do. That's what you're asking. But you can use a small MIDI controller uh, that uh, can switch anything your heart's desired, uh, you know, from patch to patch. Yeah, Joe, the special edition is available, which is this version. You can see how it looks different than Reverb. The and it's available on Reverb only. It's a tequila many, question. We are close, just waiting for the damn cable. Everly, everything else is lined up. Awesome. What, what were you saying, Michael? There's a tequila question. A super chat. Oh, I didn't see it. Let me see. That's important. <laughs> Stop um, everything. What brand tequila was that in the white vase style bottle that you like? Oh, that's Casa Azul, right? Classe Azul. Classe Azul. And they make a bunch of different ones, and they're all good. I haven't tried them all. But I believe you. I do want to actually try the Mezcal. Mm. Do you like like Mezcal? Is that like a... I wouldn't say I don't like it. Some of them. Some of them I've tried. I like. I'm not really that into it yet. But uh, some of them I've tried, I've liked. But the bottle for that one is awesome looking oh it's also expensive as hell oh wow to get up there yeah but i like really up there 450 dollars or 500 dollars for the Ooh. bottle yeah oh that's a lot. i haven't had the i haven't had the gumption to do that yet good word gumption mm-hmm. my uh my first band was called gumption trap <laughs> yeah yeah in new york city and it came from a book which is basically a gumption trap is like if you create a like you put put a hole in the ground with some food and say a monkey goes in there to grab the food but their hand can't get through the the hole if they let go of the food then they can get the hand out but as soon oh. as they make a fist that's kind of like a gumption trap like you really want it ah. but, you're, but you're trapped um that's the name of the band, but yeah, you can. If you guys will go on YouTube, you can see videos of my band back in the early '90s. 
I was playing drums just to uh, promote that. <laughs> How does this compare to the Two Notes Revolt? I think the easiest answer for that is how does it compare to anything is it sounds like a Friedman. Like to me, it sounds somewhere between a BE and like a Runt 50, like a BE 100 and a Runt 50 from my experience of having heads here. Um, when I plug in, after I've mic'd those heads or run them into a load box into an IR versus just like plug into the IRX and I'm off and running, it's somewhere in between that which are super similar so it's in that yeah. family of be run 50 you know that world um so it's like how does that compare to anything else like it sounds awesome sounds like a, a friedman really mm -hmm. it, it doesn't sound like a anything else like also remember the like friedman remember the revolt does not have irs in it right it's an analog cap sim yeah uh, hey, if you don't get the the get the interest in the product, that's cool. You know, not everybody has to buy it, but I, I think it's super cool. I mean, I've I'll tell you how I've been kind of using things. Right, I've been running my my amps into a Captor X, then into my DAW, right? Um, and sure, it sounded great. But now I don't need to go through all that bullshit, right? I can just, <laughs> it's simple. Right, right. Now I can just, this plugs straight into the, the computer and I can play with, and I'm like jamming with backing tracks and I can load Logic X up and, you know, and and record that way. And, do, you know, so, I mean, you know, is it is it brand new and something like, you know, revolutionary? I don't know, but, you know, it's awesome. So, uh, Devin has a question. Is it possible to mod a little sister head to have an effects loop on off foot switch using the IRX? Um, it might be possible, but I mean, it might just be, you could use an external switcher to do exactly what you're asking to do. It might just be easier. I mean, even like a little tiny boss. ES5 or something will do what you, you're asking. And, this and do the chance and not only switch, then do all the MIDI stuff too. That was the comment. Um, That's cool. Hey, hey, everybody's different. Um, it's fine. Well, I'll, I have an answer to that, which is like, you know, like I'm here as a, a friend to Mark and Dave, like. I don't get a dollar if Dave sells one of these. <laughs> so, like, look, it's a, to be honest, like, I set it up. I built a pedal board. I finally got around to building my pedal board. And, like, it's the perfect size. So it fits off to the side. If I need something that's like a match list or something, I'll swap it out for the Tone X. But really, my ear is tuned to, like, I can get 90% of what I, I'm wanting to do with my BE100. It just became so much easier to do it with the IRX because it's just in line with this pedals and it goes in the stereo and it's just really simple. Did it negate my BE-100? Not at all. Like it's, that's head is like holy grail for me. It's, it's similar enough, it's its own thing, but it's so functionally perfect. If I'm gonna get Nax effects, or whatever, you know, I've, you know, I've gone through a ton of these things. I'm going to put it out there. I think 90% of the people, they're like, oh, high gain sound. Let me go to the Friedman BE100 mm -hmm. because really those sound the best in the modelers. Like that, I'll go to whatever modeler and you're like, yeah, this doesn't, it's like, yeah, high gain, weird, weird, weird. And you get to the BE100, you're like, oh, that sounds awesome. Might just be how my ear is, is tuned. Um, that's fine. And then you're like, cool, I want to change it. You know, okay, save, save, save. You do, are you sure? Yes, save, move on, save it. Like, it's just, like, for me, like, it's great. I could use my toe to shift the treble knob and, like, there, I'm off and running. There's just nothing, there's no menus and stuff. It's like, it's great. Yeah. It sounds like a Friedman. 
And the other beautiful thing about if you were going to run this into your computer and if you were, you know, using real amps into, say, you know, a power station or if you were using real amps into, you know, a Captor X or something like that, you're stressing your amps. You know, here you don't have to worry about it. I do get tube anxiety. I'm like, oh, man, there's like 12 tubes in this thing. Right. I'm going to have to replace them all. Right. You know, like, oh, I don't have to. I never get that, but I guess that's because uh, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, I've run my poor Plex AN 10 for years. So, How often do you end up finding you have to change the, the tubes on like a, your Plexi? I've only changed them twice in their whole life. Oh, okay. Wow. Maybe I don't have to be so like. Yeah. But yeah, but you the had... first set of tubes finally died, and those were the original Telefunken like oh, EL34s, oh. the wow. really old, and they died, I don't know, somewhere around 2000 or something, or in the early 2000s, and then, and then I put a set of JJs in, and I haven't changed them since. Dave, do you I'm not using what... it every day either, so. Um, do you remember what the IR spec, how long the, the IR was I cannot remember. Oh man, off the top of my head, I don't remember. It wasn't like drastically longer than anything else, you know. Um, I will say it was low latency though, extremely low latency. Yeah, it's low latency, and I've tried like, like I've created an IR at like Sound City and Henson that was like two seconds long. In theory, you go, I'm at Henson. This is like one of the best sounding studios in on the planet. This should sound unbelievable. I'm using one of the best cabs in the, on the planet. This should sound unbelievable. It didn't make a difference. In all honesty, it just didn't make that much of a difference. Something about IR technology, it doesn't, it's not the same. You, you know, you, on paper you go, oh, if I had a three second IR, surely I'll get all of the room and it'll be dynamic and I'll feel super realistic. It, it doesn't, it's a limitation yeah. of the technology. So wh where everyone is sort of truncating the IRs really is kind of where it starts. To, it makes the difference. It's that initial attack and a little bit after anything else, you, you just got to add like a little room reverb or a little delay or something. I mean, it's just, you know, I think that's where, in our world of guitar, there's a there's technology headroom that I would love to see, you know, in the next five, ten years of like there's room to make a better technology than what is currently IRs. But no one has done it yet. I don't even know if it's possible. It's hmm. interesting. Uh, sorry, I missed your super chat. Uh, sent of a wheelchair a pillow. <laughs> I always, that always gets me. Uh, got my Synergy gear, which is awesome, but this is wonderful streamlined alternative that is super portable. Does Mike teach lessons? Not even. You heard me earlier. <laughs> I barely got through today. <laughs> uh, I'm actually take I take lessons, man. I'm, I'm like anyone that's amazing and blows my mind. I'm like, would you teach me something, please? Uh, Jordan. Damn. Uh, What's that, Jordan? Oh, oh yeah, he's he's bonkers. Yeah, he's he's Absolutely. got he's got an interesting uh, just his bends and his vibrato and like uh, you know how he approaches things is just crazy. I hit up Jamie Dave because I was like Jamie blew my mind like he's oh he teaches yeah yeah he, regularly we're gonna we're gonna hook up he, he's an amazing guy to learn really learn shit from because he's very very schooled and can really teach you all the stuff you probably don't know so this guy that that works at dave's shop from time to time it's, sometimes i've been in there and he's a super nice guy and i just figured oh he's a nice guy i was over there dropping something off the other day and just i hear unplugged across the room like what is happening over there it's like Robin Ford meets Alan Holdsworth, like Michael Landau, like all of these great players like merged into one. Like, like that's who I want to be. Really great. <laughs> Were you saying that uh, Jordan Ziv gives lessons? Does he give Jordan lessons? gives lessons. Really? Yeah. Oh, he does too? Yeah, he does. Wow. Mm. That, that might he happen. He does. Yeah. I hit him he up does. too. Uh, 
I'd, I'd be scared. I think this I'd be demo scared. video was bonkers. Yeah, <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, Dan Crow, super excited about the IRX question. Is there a load in the IRX, or is a load only necessary for the power amp and not the preamp? Yeah, load is only necessary for a power amp, and there's not a power amp. There's a power amp simulation, but not a power amp. Um, Seems like we're schooling everyone on what a preamp is. And yeah. don't plug your amp into the IRX. Things yeah, will no. explode. Yeah. We, we do not take any response. Uh, uh, Robert Keeley just messaged me. He said he bought one. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, wait, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> right. We'll, we'll send you one. You know, you, you didn't have to, like, you've been oh, he, very nice to me. So, I mean. Robert's been awesome. We need to have him on again. Yeah. So, he is one of the nicest guys in the industry. Yeah, really? he's a sweetheart. I hope he's feeling better. Um, I see, it seems like he's fine. Buying okay. gear. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's buying gear. He's buying uh, gear. <laughs> that always makes you feel better. Uh, you got me, Dave. Ordered one today. If you turn off the IRs, can this be used strictly as a preamp into a power amp? Sure can. All right. Uh, what is the max IR length when using our own IRs? Uh, you don't have to worry about using your own IR because it auto-converts. So it auto will auto truncate to what what's usable in the uh, IRX, and you know what? I don't have the figure what that figure is in front of me right at this moment. Okay, I I just found it. Latency oh, is. I might I might have that figure right here. Uh oh! Wait, look! Someone answered me. Uh, one millisecond latency. Forty-two milliseconds is the length. I have something slightly different, but close at 48 K 50 millisecond IR fixed length. Um, and the latency is 16 samples 0.66 milliseconds. Well, wow. 0.66 plus 0.2 from the converter. That's the total round trip. Or through all the way through. Well, that's low. Yeah, super low. Super low. Considering that, like, my logic setting is set to like two fifty six. <laughs> Joe, it's available on Reverb. Just look up IRX. Yep, it's right there. You'll see it. It's uh, the five ninety nine version. So, if you want to buy it today, grab it. Um. Okay, I think we've gone through all the questions. Is there anything else we want to cover? It's just turned into snarky versions of the same questions. <laughs> uh, DC, you got me. Got me. Dave ordered one today. Thank you. Awesome. And guys, check out the, the links, Sweetwater and Tomon, please. Uh, if you want to buy oh, the there, There's a super chat at the bottom. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Can I take my other amps and run them in from their effects send into the effects return of the R F IRX to use the power amp simulation and IRs onto my computer? You sure can. Yeah, or even if you have another little preamp pedal or, or you just wanted to take uh, your overdrive pedal and go with an IR and see what that sounds like, you could run it into the return. You could uh, do all sorts of stuff. You would theoretically need to also have a load on that amp that you're sending into the IR? Like a speaker uh, it depends or a on the amp. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have a speaker plugged into it just in case, but you won't be hearing it probably if you're using the send or every amp's a little different with that. So sometimes it's the return that switches uh, it out. So maybe you just stick a cable in the return and just have it sitting there. Uh, and you use, then you just use the send. And real quick, just again, Davis Phillips, does the IRX have any lineage with the Motor City Drive? The not IRX at all. is not an overdrive pedal, distortion pedal, not a pedal. Total preamp, yep. totally different. No, li no lineage whatsoever with the Motor City Drive. Totally, totally, totally different. Yep. 
And how close to the butter slacks? I mean, as close as a BE is to the butter slacks. I mean, it doesn't have the SAT circuit or anything like the butter slacks has built in. So, no, not exactly. Okay. Uh, another great product, Jay Stevens. And I want to say thanks to Mark for mentioning Signum. Thanks for the great cables, Vinny. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Jay Stevens. Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, by the way, Michael, your Vi V30 Dyn IR is still my favorite for live use with my twin sister. Awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah, you guys check out Michael's awesome Kemper profiles and all his. Yeah, I got some Friedman's on that Kemper profiles. And, uh, you know, you have uh, a bunch of cab IR. You have. What what all what all are you offering these days? I got, I got a little of everything now. I got some blues. I got some reds. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got Kemper stuff. Uh, there's Tonex stuff on the Tonex Tonet store. Uh, that's preamp, uh, old preamp stuff. And then there's some IRs, and there's IRs over at the um, Two Notes store also. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, all there's right. also awesome. Dave's. Two Notes IR pack, which is uh, fantastic sounding, and Pete's IR pack, which is also fantastic sounding. Yep. So they go to your website? No, for the for the Two Notes IRs, they go directly. It's done through the software of Two Notes. Uh, if you just want my IRs that are not Two Notes, that are just WAV files, you could come to, to my website, BigHairyProfiles.com. Cool. Um, it's great also when I have to send a tech uh, tech support problem and I go Michael at big hairy profiles.com and they're like what is that <laughs> you know I just imagine like it's a big hairy dude trying to get a date <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny uh, so oh, who is the iconic artist from the 70s you got that cab from Dave Steven Stills ah wow that's super cool did any story about why the Tolex was taken off of it? No story whatsoever, but, you know, it looks like a very 70s kind of thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was empty when I got it, so I, the, I put the 90s era slash the uh, greenbacks in it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Stephen Stills was great. He knew a few things about tone, right? Um, as Spartan Pride said. Uh, let's see. Can a Kemper wait? Can a Kemper profile? Can I Kemper profile the IRX running into a BEOD coming out of my? Oh, come on! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the best part is you were reading it. I know. And I'm like, oh, coming out of my chat. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Brain exploded. <laughs> All right, I'm getting tired. So, uh, um... <laughs> but in terms of the IRs, just so you know, if you're putting your own IR, it has to be one of the wave file IRs. You can't pull like a two notes IR and put it in there. No. Uh, Braxel's asked this question a few times. So why not make a pedal format like this where you can plug in different modules, like Synergy modules? Because Synergy does that. Yeah, the Syn 1 is is sort of small in that world. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I think we've... It wouldn't be that small, let me tell you. It wouldn't be as small as it is. Like I said, this is narrower than a Strymon pedal. Mm-hmm. And a smidge deeper than the Strymon pedal, I think. I think that's what the, the deal was. I don't have one sitting right here right now. But it's it's small. Yep. And super yeah. light, by the way. I mean, here, that. here's the pedal and here's my phone. Yeah, I wonder what it weighs. Right. Let's find out. I have a scale next here. Do you really? Oh, I do. Dave's, Dave's dealing on the side. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it weighs, uh, yeah, more money that way. Um, <laughs> One point eight pounds. Oh, that's light. So that's nothing. It's not going to add any weight to your deal. Yeah, like I said, I threw it in my gig bag, and it it's invisible inside a gig bag. Yeah. Oh. Dan Crow just grabbed one custom shop. Awesome. I know. Um, Sammy Bowler's doing some touring soon. He's going to be using one of those for traveling. 
with uh, I think a Boss MS3, <laughs> a little mix. Mm. Eight pounds is a heavy burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Eight pound burrito, man, that's something. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that would be I'd like to see. That's that's like the the length of the table. <laughs> like here, right here. Oh man, burrito. Um, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. God damn it, now I want Mexican food. <laughs> oh, man. I'm full. I had dinner already. Um, the IRX will trample its competition like the Finns did last week. Thank you. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Let's hope they kick the Bills' ass this weekend, too. Also, if anyone really wants to know what the high voltage is on the pedal, it's 265 volts. Hmm. So... Play so is high. that one of those things like don't open the box and stick your fingers around in there? It's probably a good idea not to open the box and stick your fingers around in while plugged in. It's, it's okay. always a good thing just not to open the box and while something's plugged in. I'm kind of handsy, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, look, guys, make sure you check, check out the new Friedman IRX preamp and... Um, there's lots of videos online to hear how it sounds. Uh, people, if you're watching the video, you can go back and listen to uh, Michael playing. Can on. one see the tube? Tubes. No. You really, you really want to see the tubes? There is a picture of it in my video, and there's a picture of it in the Friedman video, pretty clearly. Even in the snapshot chat. of yeah, that. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask you, Michael? You had a picture of uh, the prototype. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, long ago. I think that was earlier in this year. I mean, it still it sounded amazing from whatever revision that was. I don't know what how many times they went through it, but oh, so many. How long did it take you to develop it, Dave? A couple of years. And yeah. Was did it start out any different than kind of the end product? It was always in the ballpark of the you know they're just they're fine tuning it. It was terribly painful to have tasted the fruit earlier in the year and then to have to give it back. And then, like, when is it coming? It's coming. When's it coming? It's coming. <laughs> When's it coming? It's coming. It was a long year. Did it get pushed back for any particular reason? Uh, there, I mean, there was all sorts of supply issues, you know, um, for, uh, you know, we, we had gone through the pandemic and then there was chip supply issues and all sorts of you know all sorts of issues like that manufacturing issues and stuff so it's all sorted now this is we got lots of them this is an interesting question is power amp simulation a new innovation super cool product dave i don't think it's really a new innovation i mean i think there's other products that have power amp simulation in it i mean it might not be as is good as the one we have but all right the two note stuff has power amp emulation but like the one in the irx feels really integrated into it like there's no con controls to it other than presence and thump like that's power amp control right dave presence yeah. and thump well but it's it's in the power section yeah okay so i mean it just like there's no way to make it sound bad yeah. It sounds good. And someone asked Carl, 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 Carl's in depth. Carl's in depth. Uh, why no Class D power amp section? Well, first of all, Class D just doesn't sound that good. Uh, second of all, how big do you want it to be? And frankly, miles. the way things were going with a lot of you know pro players and things, they weren't using any ant. They weren't using any cabinets, so. I didn't really see the need to do that. They're just not using a cab. So, you know, I'm, I'm not catering. I wasn't catering to that audience. Uh, but it would have to be considerably bigger to put a Class D power amp in it. Hmm. And it just, a Class D doesn't sound that good. Cecil, this is not a tube pedal. This is a preamp. The tube preamp. Are tube pedals gimmicky? Okay, there there have been tube pedals that are very gimmicky. Yes, correct. 
but this is actually the preamp of one of my amplifiers in this box. It's not uh, a tube shoved in a box that's lit up and is running no voltage through it at all. Or some, some of them even no sound. Uh, Peter, the power amp sim is engaged out of the gate. You don't need to set it in the software. Yeah. Um, is there any tone headroom difference between 9 volt and 12 volt? Uh, no. Just use, use 9 volt. That's what it's geared for. Oh, well, let me take that back. Um, you can do... Anything from 9 to 12, 12 takes less current. So it ends up equalizing to using what it wants to use? Is that what you're saying? It kind of just does the same thing? No matter what you feed it between 9 and 12? Uh, it's not changing any headroom or anything like that, okay. uh, but, it, it, uh, but 12 will draw less current. Okay. It doesn't yeah. all of a sudden become the like a high current, awesome. It is. It draws a twelve. Is maybe I'll get an answer. <laughs> Sorry, the person that did the switching power section of this is answering. So at twelve volts, it's uh, six hundred and fifty mils. At nine volt, it's seven hundred and fifty. Mm. Okay. What's up, Kyle? Released my video today. Great stuff, Dave. Really enjoyed the way it sounded, and the built-in impulse responses are insane. Awesome, man. I, mean, I, ha I, I, I will eventually see all the videos, although I have to sit there forever and, f like, weed through the ones I haven't seen yet. So I, I, I'll get there. I like Kyle's videos. Yeah, they're always good. Thank mm -hmm. you, Kyle. Yep. I'm sure it's great. Um, no problem, Peter. Uh, sorry, Cecil, if I sounded rude. Um, I was like, I got gotcha. you. Don't worry. Um, let's see. Serious question. If you're not saying it's a pedal, why does it have? What? Okay. I don't know. It's a all tube preamp in a pedal format. It is not a stomp box pedal made to go in front of an amp. It's so like my it's kids like, at dinner time. They're just like, let me enough. poke you until you yes. just. <laughs> it is a pedal format. Dad, you said it. You're one day off. You're one hour, minute off of what you, your story was. Let me just poke you to prove yeah, that I'm right. Yeah, it's 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 like uh, you know your son asks you what, what time what time is it and you go it's uh, it's uh, seven o'clock. And and he goes, no, it's six fifty eight. Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like thinking to yourself, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh man. Uh you little smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ola gonna do a video? Uh, I think I was going to do something at some point in time. I don't know where that stands right at the moment. Okay. I don't know what the last uh, uh, thing was about that. Uh, hopefully, Ola will be on the show. We haven't haven't gotten a firm. I, I mean, I talked. I mean, talked to Ola about it. he wanted to do it, but the thing is, he wanted to do it in person. Mm. And I was like, okay, how are we going to do that? Maybe Nam. Maybe I'll try to do it around Nam. Huh. Um, yeah, Ola would be great on the show. Um, Dave, would you consider modding one for me? <laughs> Here <laughs> he's, we go. He's kidding. He's like, he, Here we go. <laughs> can you put another tube in there? <laughs> A 5 2 mod. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no. All right. Well, I think we hard. Not enough room. Sorry. <laughs> Will it chug? It definitely chugs. That's for sure. Um, all right, it's guys. Kind of an, it's an all-around box. You know, it's not necessarily geared just at metal or geared just at, mm -hmm. uh, you know, vintage stuff. Or you know, it's kind of like a little bit of everything. Yeah, I mean, the Plexi Channel gives you 
you can do yeah cool. it's well it's well versed for a variety of styles you know? yep all right but does it gent <laughs> the right guitar and maybe a tube screamer sure <laughs> i got close he did it down it. tune even more i haven't heard it and i want it modded <laughs> That's funny. That's usually the <gasps> second the JL voiced one. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, a red one would look really cool though. That would look cool. Oh, that's Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it would look cool. Well, I want to thank Michael. Michael, thanks for coming on, man, and sure. doing the demo and oh, working show. working through all the uh, logistics with me. Get get there. There. Wait, will a hot mod work with its <laughs> oh stop please everyone stop <laughs> pink one call it the pink burrito <laughs> I modded with a hay borer oh awesome. yes michael all Moore right job. um and with Dave's that, response f no yeah. <laughs> Our next show is with um uh God, remind me. Billy Morrison. Uh, Billy Morrison on uh, radio October. host, artist, guitar player, Billy Idol band member, uh screenplay writer, uh let's see. I don't know. Played, there's there's probably a few other things. Maybe Played in the, the cult, cult for a while. Uh he has had a long music career lots of stories and he uses the irx so no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so, uh okay well guys that's the next show which is october 6 at 8 p.m did we say that 8 p.m i forget i um, don't know yeah, i don't remember anyway look in the i i think that yeah i think we're gonna do it at, at 5 p.m pacific okay all right it's available now jake jackson uh, you can buy the IRX right now. So either go yeah. on go on Sweetwater, use so our you link. could email me, go on Friedman, go on Reverb, go on Sweetwater, go on Tomon. I don't know where the hell you are. Probably go on a few other places. <sighs> All of the above. All right, guys. Michael, hang on while we say goodbye. Sure. Take care, everybody. Have a great Thank night. Hey, guys. Bye, we'll gang. Enjoy. Go buy your pedals. <laughs> it's not a pedal. It's not a pedal. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Go buy your pramps. <laughs>